In fact, among the worst cases, I count also those who give their time to nothing but drink and lust, for those are the most shameful preoccupations of all. Other people, even if the semblance of glory that grips them is false, nevertheless go astray in respectable fashion. You can cite for me people who are greedy, those quick to anger, or people who busy themselves with unjust hatreds or wars, but all of them sin in a more manly fashion. It is those abandoned to the belly and lust who bear the stain of dishonor. Scrutinize every moment of such people's lives, and note how much time they spend on their ledger-keeping, how much on setting traps or fearing them, how much on cultivating others or being cultivated by others, how much on giving or receiving bail, how much on dinner parties, which themselves have become business, and you'll see that their affairs, whether good or bad, allow them no time to draw breath. To sum up, Everyone agrees that no one area of activity can be successfully pursued by someone who is preoccupied. Rhetoric cannot, nor can the liberal arts. Since the distracted mind takes in nothing really deeply, but rejects everything that is, so to speak, pounded into it. Nothing is less characteristic of a man preoccupied than living. There is no knowledge that is harder to acquire. Instructors of other disciplines are too a penny. Indeed, mere boys have been seen to master some of the disciplines so thoroughly that they could even be masters in the classroom. But learning how to live takes a whole lifetime. And you'll perhaps be more surprised at this. It takes a whole lifetime to learn how to die. So many men of the highest station have set aside all their encumbrances, renounced their wealth, their business, their pleasures, and right up to the very end of life they've made it their sole aim to know how to live. Nevertheless, the majority of them depart from life admitting that they did not yet have such knowledge. Still less have those others attained it. Believe me, it's the mark of a great man, and one rising above human weakness, to allow no part of his time to be skimmed off. Accordingly, such a person's life is extremely long, because he's kept available for himself the whole of whatever amount of time he had. None of it lay fallow and uncultivated, and none of it was under another's control. For being a most careful guardian of his time, he found nothing worth exchanging it for. And so that man has had enough time, but those deprived of much of their life by the public have necessarily had too little. Nor should you imagine that those people aren't sometimes conscious of their loss. Certainly you will hear many of those burdened by their great prosperity occasionally cry out amid their hordes of clients or their pleadings of cases or their other respectable forms of wretchedness. I have no chance to live. <laughs> of course you don't. All those who engage you in their business disengage you from yourself. How many days did that defendant of yours take from you? How many that candidate? Or that old lady, wearied as she is by bearing her heirs. Or that character who feigns illness to excite the greed of legacy hunters. Or that powerful friend of yours who holds on to you, not for true friendship, but for show. Check off, I say, and review the days of your life. You will see that the very few of them, and those the worthless ones, have stayed in your possession. The man who has achieved the high office he'd prayed for longs to lay it aside and repeatedly says, When will this year end? The man who puts on the games thought it a great privilege that the responsibility for giving them fell upon him. Now he says, When will I be free of them? That advocate has people competing for his attention throughout the forum. With the crowd he draws, he fills the whole place further than he can be heard. 
When, he says, will there be a vacation? Everyone sends his life racing headlong and suffers from a longing for the future, a loathing of the present. But the person who devotes every second of his time to his own needs and who organizes each day as if it were his complete life neither longs for nor is afraid of the next day. For what new kind of pleasure is there that any hour can now bring? Everything has been experienced, everything enjoyed to the full. For the rest, fortune may make arrangements as it wishes, but his life has already reached safety. Additions can be made to his life, but nothing taken away from it. An addition made in the way that a man who is already satisfied and full takes a portion of food which he doesn't crave, and yet has room for. So there's no reason to believe that someone has lived long because he has grey hair and wrinkles. He has not lived long, but long existed. For suppose you thought that a person had sailed far, who had been caught in a savage storm as soon as he left harbour, and after being carried in this direction or that, was driven in circles over the same course by alternations of winds raging from different quarters. He didn't have a long voyage, but he was long tossed about. 